So this is the, the tool which I'm going to use to unsolder the uh, surface mount chip. Now I've never done unsoldering of surface mount chips before. Um, uh, I got this off of eBay. It only costs about £30 and it's a desoldering station. All it does really is it, it, um, it produces a lot of hot air which heats up the solder on the board and uh, desolders all of the pins at one time. Then you, in theory you can just lift off the chip without um, disturbing the other chips hopefully. Um, it has a control here for the the flow of the air. Now you don't want that too high so uh, the point of this control I believe is that you want it high so that it doesn't burn out the element in the heater too soon so it extends the length, length of the heater uh, but you don't want it high enough that it actually blows the other chips off the uh, off the board as you're unsolding the chip that you want to unsolder so, so I'm going to have to adjust that so that it's in a reasonable range for that and then there's a temperature setting and they from what I've read a lot of people seem to use 350 degrees uh, but I'm going to be using about 380 degrees I think because I found that um, just through some experimenting on test boards uh, 380 seems to give give me the best results for for the way that I'm used to it at the minute maybe I'll improve my technique uh, and then this is just the tool itself so it's just uh, a tool which just expels hot air. Okay, so this is the really tricky bit. So this is the replacement board. Uh, this is the chip I want to take off. And uh, there's some really small components down the bottom here. <laughs> and because uh, I'm not used to doing this, I'm probably going to knock those off and I hope I don't. And then there's some components close to it around there as well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to heat up the... Uh, this chip, I have to be very careful. Uh, so I've got it mounted in a uh, in a in a vise, uh, so hopefully it won't move around. Um, and when it's heated up, I'm going to try reaching in with these tweezers and just picking up the chip. But I'm not really confident about this. <laughs> so see what see what happens. Okay, that went better than I thought. I don't think I've disturbed any chips. So they all, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch yet, hopefully. So all these ones around here look okay. There's two small ones that I was really worried about look okay. And the chip is now off. Okay, so this chip I'm effectively going to dispose of, but I'm just going to put it to one side just in case I ever need to try it again. But okay, stage one, that's good. Now what I need to do is remove it from the other the chip from the other board and then place it back on this board. Right, so this is the board which is going to be going to be disposed of. So it doesn't matter so much if I move other components, but I'd, I'd like to try and re remove this IC without actually moving other components, just to keep it, you know, just as a bit of practice if anything. Um, something which I forgot to do in the last uh, when I took took the component off the last board is remember where this line is so the line is closest to me um, because the, the chip has to go in the right orientation when I put it on the other board so so that's very important to do lucky enough I got it on video anyway so so I could always look back but um, yeah it's important to remember that um, so I'm going to try now doing exactly the same with this board and going to take the chip off uh, something again all the components which are close to it uh, which is a good sign that all the components are the same, so because it's the same board.
it wasn't quite so tidy but but it came off without moving other components which is good again it's a nice bit of practice to, to do oh yeah and I've got to remember this is the chip that I'm keeping so I need to make sure I don't don't lose this okay so this is still the old board and I've had an idea what I'm going to do is I'm going to as a bit of practice I'm going to put the old the chip I want to dispose of onto the board that I want to dispose of because uh, I'm a bit nervous about putting the chip back on because I'm not sure uh, desoldering is fine you heat it up and then you remove the, the device but you know getting the chip back on the board um, I've never done that yet so uh, what I should really have is some new uh, solder paste because this the solder that's on there is uh, is quite old and it's probably not going to flow very well um, so but I don't have any solder paste but what I do have is um, plumbing uh, flux for solder so I'm hoping that this will hopefully help spread uh, spread the, the solder out when it heats up again. I'm just gonna use a cotton bud to put a bit of that on there. And I hope, hopefully when it heats up, it'll allow the solder to flow again. Also, it will hopefully um, help hold the chip on the board. So what another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the chip on top of that and then heat the chip up without without tweezers near it and I'm hoping the, the chip should just sink in so I'm going to place the chip back on and I've got the, the line in the right orientation towards me not that it matters for this one I'm going to try and get lined up as best I can that's probably going to blow a bit when I Heat, heat it up, but let's have a go. I'm hoping that will just sink into place and be obvious when it sinks. I don't know if that is melted on there. I'll give it some time to just cool down a bit and see if, see if it's in place. Let's just give it a bit of pressure on top. Okay, well, it's not moving when I'm touching it. Okay, well, that seems to be that seems to be on there quite quite well. Now, I'm not confident about those joints, but. Um, this is just an experiment really, just to, to see how, how it goes. That seems to be okay. Uh, next, I guess I need to do it onto the, the board that I want to try and put back on the drive. Okay, well this is this is it, this is the ultimate. If this goes well, then hopefully it might work. No guarantees, because I don't really know what's wrong with the drive. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit more, uh, a bit more flux on this board than I had put on the last board. But not too much. I'll try and remove some of that. Oops. <laughs> okay, that might not be a good thing. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully, it will just melt off. Managed to get over the small components. Um, okay, let's just put the lid back on that. Right, so placing the chip on there, making sure that the line is towards me. Hopefully it goes on the pads. Okay. Not so much solder on this board, so I'm hoping that it will be okay. I 
think that's in place. Well, here goes. Oh yeah, the flux just melted straight away, so that's good. I thought it might be a mess. Let's see if that, give it a couple of seconds. That seems to, seems to have gone on there as well. I don't know about the quality of the connections and uh, I'll have a look and see if it looks like it's lined up okay. But if that looks okay, I'll, I'll give it a go and see what happens. The other components seem to be, the small ones especially, seem to be in place. Okay, it looks hopefully okay. So uh, the settings that I used on on this de desolder station seem to work quite well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sort of knowledgeable enough to know any different. But I had the uh, had the airflow at five, and that seemed to be good. Didn't blow off any um, components. I started off at four and a half, but actually I turned it up to five after a while, and uh, and that that was quite quite good. And when you power on, it tells you what the uh, temperature you had it set at. So 380 is is the temperature I went at, and uh, I think I'll probably continue using that setting. Um, cause that seemed to work okay.